Africa Think Tank Summit is the annual flagship event of uh, the African Capacity Building Foundation. Uh, as you may know, uh, the mission of the foundation is uh, to build human skills and competencies, to build the, insti the capacity, institutional capacity of organizations, and also to generate knowledge and disseminate it to inform ev evidence-based policy making, evidence-based uh, development program formulation, uh, but also capacities for execution. Uh, so, um, over a period of uh, 15 years, uh, ACBF uh, supported the creation of 35 think tanks to support, uh, provide insights that support policy formulation in our member countries. Today, uh, the network of African think tanks have grown to over 60 think tanks across all the continent. So the Think Tank Summit is the platform that brings all these think tanks together to do three things. Think tanks can use this platform to connect with policymakers, uh, ministries of economy and planning, uh, leaders of the private sector, uh, leaders of the civil society, etc. Everyone actually who uses the results of research. And why it is important to meet in the, on this platform is for them actually to exchange about the critical questions that these policymakers, uh, private sector, civil society are wrestling with. This has the advantage of making the work of the think tanks demand driven. It was a meeting of minds in Côte d'Ivoire as think tanks, policymakers, and experts from Africa and around the world converge in Abidjan for the 10th Africa Think Tank Summit and the launch of the Ubora Academy. The theme of this year is Evidence-Based Strategies for Sustainable Climate Financing in Africa. I'm Kenneth Bomo, and I'll bring you some of the key highlights from the summit. So let's set the stage on the role of think tanks in Africa. The side events at the summit opened with the 30th anniversary celebration of CAPEC, the Abidjan-based Economic Policy Analysis Unit of CIRES. So how has this organization impacted the development of Côte d'Ivoire? Uh, CAPEC has been created in 1993 by uh, ACBF, African Capacity Building Foundation, and the government of, of Côte d'Ivoire. You see, so uh, now, I mean, since last, uh, last year, in uh, 2023, uh, CAPEC has been, I think we have now our 30th anniversary. It's like, so we want to just have a kind of break to think about the past, to evaluate our different actions, the effect, the impact of these actions on the development process of Côte d'Ivoire, uh, on also the different strategies on the uh, West African I mean, uh, area. Uh, so uh, actually, uh, when we look at uh, what we have done so far uh, concerning Côte d'Ivoire, for example, uh, firstly, uh, CAPEC has been a think tank created to support, you know, the different uh, poli uh, policies elaborated by the, uh, 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 I mean, uh, the minister in charge of economic and, and planning, and also to contribute to the capacity building of the different, I mean, uh, uh, public staffs. Uh, and also uh, staff in the private sector and the civil society's organizations. And what, this is something we have done, like uh, we have actually trained about uh, uh, 1,500 persons during these 30 years. Uh, also, we have uh, uh, realized uh, more than 200 studies, you know, more than 200 studies. And uh, recently, in average, you have something like 15 studies to support different uh, sectoral and uh, macroeconomic uh, analysis in Côte d'Ivoire, even in the West African region. So this is uh, what we have done. And our studies, our results concern different aspects of our uh, economy, like uh, the agricultural sector, the industry. We talk about uh, uh, infrastructure. We talk about mining. We talk about... Uh, uh, I mean, governance, governance, and recently we are working on the indigenous indicators of governance of Côte d'Ivoire.
With a focus on evidence-based strategies for sustainable climate financing in Africa, numerous side events touch on salient aspects. But why is this year's theme critical for Africa? Yes, you know, uh, African countries are disproportionately affected uh, by the effects of climate change. We witness every year uh, either droughts in certain regions, which poses a key question around food sovereignty, food security even. And uh, also we face floods, particularly in cities. You know that urbanization is growing. Most of our populations are living in cities today. And floods and all of that, they disrupt actually uh, the social fabric of our society. It creates problems. And uh, so many uh, uh, coastal erosion, etc. This is to, to, to name a few. To address these challenges, uh, African countries need to have uh, the information, the research that allows them to develop these strategies. But once they have these programs, it's about accessing to resources. And uh, most of them may not have awareness of the different innovative financing mechanisms that are available to them. And as a result of that, we know that the resources mobilized for climate adaptation and uh, climate transition are not enough compared to the needs. But that what is already available is not fully utilized. And African countries access the, the least those resources. So this is why it is important to help them understand and master these new financing mechanism and also build their capacity for project preparation, particularly bankable project preparation to boost, to boost financing that can help actually really go through the, the journey. Most of us today can feel the impact of climate change. Uh, it's no longer news that climate change is impacting on the continent. You can see when you go, you go to the beach, you travel to the desert. It's obvious. Even in terms of some health challenges that some communities are facing, we have issues with drought, we have issues with hurricane. Some of the very strange natural occurrences that we never heard about in Africa before now are occurring. And a number of them are linked to climate change issues. We also know that a number of African countries are forced to spend a lot of additional resources to fight the effects of this climate change. So I think, therefore, focusing these think tank summits on the issue of climate change and what can be done about it, especially with regards to what strategies, what options we need to take to ensure that we tackle it is the most, I would say, timely thing that anyone can think about. African development, but I'll say any development for that matter, needs to base its works on knowledge. That means people that are competent, ready, and on institutions. And this is not something you get mechanically. You have to prepare, you have to train, and you have to do research in order to feed these people with evidence-based knowledge. General theories are good, but they are more effective if they help to find evidence-based solutions. That's why think tanks are very important. They live with us, they live the reality, and the research are done on what is really happening in the environment they live in, that's mean our countries, that's mean the continent. And what they produce, if properly used, allow to, 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 to design policies and institutions to accompany in a more effective way the African development. Perhaps in talking about uh, the theme of the year, it's also important to reflect on uh, the Africa Capacity Building Foundation, which is an institution that was created way back in 1991 with the Ministers for Finance, with the support of the World Bank. 
to be able to capacitate the countries uh, with um, planning and financial management, but using evidence, which of course means uh, evidence is data. As it is said, in God we trust, everything else is data. And so this is one of the things that the SBF has done and has helped to create a number of think tanks in Africa, which are supporting African countries, particularly in the area of public finance management and also in human resource development. Now, turning to the question of the theme, the biggest challenge that now faces our, you know, uh, you know, universe, our earth, and which is threatening not only our, our economies, uh, our livelihood, but also the very existence of our human beings is climate change. And because of that, you wouldn't have had a better theme than something that is so pressing. And uh, of course, one then has to proceed to say, why the theme is because not enough is being done. Not enough being done because there is issue of capacity and there is also issue of commitment. And so this is to address those two challenges. It's, it's very crucial. You see, um, Africa's economies are dominated by SMEs, basically. And even in terms of trade, it's the small traders that are trading across the borders. Now, the think tanks play a very important role because the think tanks arise from the civil society. All right. And so they have that, that strength in terms of advocacy for policies. Uh, and now we are, SCBF is building their capacity to conduct research, much more policy oriented research, research that is practical and actually will uh, enable governments to implement those, those policies and backed by evidence. You know, so what this summit does, it also builds collaboration, you know. Um, for instance, we, we recently conducted an institutional assessment of seven think tanks, uh, all right, as SCBF, using our organizational assessment tool. And uh, we found some common areas of challenges, and mainly this relates to knowledge uh, repository, meaning how you maintain that knowledge, those knowledge products, how you enhance communication and advocacy, you know, so, and communication is another major element of a challenge for think tanks. And then finally, uh, policy-oriented research skills. The ministerial plenary sessions explored innovative approaches to climate finance policy and regulation by African countries. The government, not only this one, but even previous one in terms of practices, is moving towards encouraging behavior change technology whether it's the technology they use in production or in consum con for production of consumer goods, mainly. This includes, for example, actions that reduces uh, environmental pollution, policies on plastic, recycling, and so forth. I want to say two things. Uh, one is actually, you know that our re human, uh, human resources is our biggest asset. And I think that we really need to emphasize training, especially ACBF, your call and UNDP here and other. I think we need really to ensure that we have equipped them with the necessary training so that we can move forward. Uh, for us in Africa, there is one common uh, to most parts of African continent, the issue of uh, carbon credits. And this carbon credits, for me, we've tried, and among the, the, the uh, failures which I didn't get chance to talk about was was uh, the regulations. We put up the regulations, we had to change the regulations, but they're still not working. Uh, and for me, it's not working because there is no probably a will from the other side. Uh, and, and I think uh, as SBF, we really need to take this one up uh, to help the African countries uh, to deal with the issue of uh, carbon credits.
The second day of proceedings began with a keynote address by the United Nations Special Advisor on Africa, Christina Duarte, followed by my fireside chat with the CEO of Africa Carbon Markets Initiative, where we explored the challenges, measures being taken to advance the market and its perspectives about the development of the carbon markets on the continent. Without energy, the continent's development remains an untamable goal. The United Nations Secretary General has been emphasizing the urgency of this transition. He says, and I quote, a future without fossil fuels is inevitable. However, achieving a fair and expedite transition is not guaranteed. It depends on collective action. By next year, every nation must submit an ambitious new Climate Action Plan, known as National Determined Contributions, NDCs. These plans must integrate national energy strategies, sustainable development priorities, and climate ambitions while aligning with 1.5 degrees Celsius global targets. Thank you so much, Paul, for your time today. Uh, it's quite an interesting time that we're looking at when you look at the uh, evolution of the carbon market space here. But I would like you to speak to the current measures uh, African countries are taking uh, to engage effectively in global carbon markets. And uh, what successes have we been recorded here or observed so far? Okay, fantastic. A uh, real pleasure. Uh, great to just before this fantastic crowd. I think first and foremost is just acknowledging that um, when the Africa Carbon Max Initiative was launched um, at, at the tail end of the year 2022, um, it was launched by the Rockefeller Foundation, the Global Energy Alliance for People and Planet, and Sustainable Energy for All, together with the UN Economic Commission for Africa and the High Level Climate Champions. But even at that time, uh, and when you look at what's happened over the last year, there's a sentiment of as to whether the carbon market conversation is being pushed and driven by the global north rather than being set uh, by the continent and, and the global south's intentions. Um, so one of the key positive steps we're seeing is we're in, we're progressing a refined partnership with the um, African Union Commission, the UN Economic Commission for Africa and African Development Bank to make sure that as we talk about direction setting and strategies on the continent, mm. it's owned and driven by continental institutions. And you really have them at the forefront of really prioritizing and uh, optimizing how we take these steps. As part of the proceedings of the 33rd Annual Board of Governors meeting, the ACBF launched the Ubora Academy, which the foundation says is more than just a training platform. The Academy aims to bridge the gap between theory and practice by equipping leaders with the right technical and soft skills to succeed. Today, it was uh, the 33rd Annual meeting of the Board of Governors of ACBF, which is the highest governing body which meets every year to discharge on its governance responsibility. This means uh, reviewing and approving the annual report, reviewing and approving the financial statements, uh, approving and giving orientations for the future program, uh, but also looking at discussing and devising strategies uh, to reinforce and make uh, ACBF's work uh, more impactful and open new opportunities. That's what was just done today. And uh, we were very pleased to see a very high turnout of the governors and also very rich discussions and orientations. We as a secretariat, uh, we will be very happy to implement and we'll do our best 
to increase our impact on the continent. It was also an occasion to launch uh, the Ubora Academy. The Ubora Academy is part of the new strategy and the new business model of the foundation. And uh, this is a very important vehicle for ACBF embracing new technology and uh, uh, putting its mandate in the, its current context, actually looking at efficiencies and how to build scale. That's what Ubora Academy allows to do. It allows to open up ACBF services to different sectors, not just the public sector, but to the private sector, to civil society, to academia, what have you. And even those who want to embrace new or enrich uh, their professional career by adding new skills. Uh, also, Obora Academy is not a brick and mortar in, uh, academy. It is a hybrid platform uh, uh, that has a novel, very innovative platform that offers a new experience of learning, but also Obora Academy will live in the already existing training institutions and universities. And this is how uh, the Ubora Academy will uh, go in every place, every part, every corner in Africa in the next few months. The Academy's vision is to equip Africans with skills and competences to address complex challenges and drive meaningful change. The initiative is supported by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Finland under the African-Finnish Partnership for Taxation Capacity in the Africa program. It's important for Finnish government and for Finland always to provide a good uh, capacity building and development training uh, activities. And it's kind of in the philosophical mind of us that whenever we put the efforts to the public sector, uh, we increase the good governance and that increases also the sustainability and digitalization and so forth. So these topics are very important for us and we want to focus on those areas. Yeah, because capacity building, yes, is good, but in terms of the implementation, I can imagine that there's, there's going to be a lot of digital service and digital training involved here. Can you speak to the scope of the, of this, of the program and uh, uh, where it's targeted at? Yeah, especially in this case, we wanted to focus on the digitalization to access more people because the basic traditional training activities are not enough. We need to get more people involved. And there we see that the benefits of the, of the artificial intelligence, benefits of the training, they are much more efficient to reach the people, to, to improve the access to the, to the training possibilities. And this is how we can also increase the impact. Uh, for the greater emphasis and, and build the capacities and competencies because this is how we, how we believe that the only way to do more effectively and better is to increase the people's competencies on the leadership, on the good, good public uh, governance. The launch of the Ubora Academy is part of the Africa Capacity Building Foundation's strategic plan, which is in line with the new business model of the foundation. And this brings us to the end of the coverage of the 10th Africa Think Tank Summit. Views have been exchanged and experiences have been shared, but definitely think tanks play a key role in shaping and influencing Africa's development narrative, and knowledge is also integral to developing evidence-based strategies for sustainable climate financing. I'm Kenneth Bomo. thank you so much for watching.